Now, in the first series of experiments, what we wanted to do was determine under what conditions does this enzyme perform best. So here what we're looking for are what are known as the optimal conditions. Those conditions in this particular exercise that we were looking for are, of course, temperature and pH. Now, depending upon the source of the enzyme, where we originally derived that enzyme from, that will dictate what the optimal conditions in regards to temperature and pH are. For instance, if the lactase in this lab was obtained from a human being, so if it were human lactase, well, if you think about it, our body temperature is 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit, which is approximately 37 degrees Celsius. So we would probably expect the optimum temperature to be right around 37 degrees. And lactase is also used in the small intestine. Now, unlike the stomach, which has an acidic pH, the small intestine has a pH that can vary, but typically it's a little above 7. So we would expect the optimal pH to be probably somewhere between 7 and 8 of this particular enzyme, if it were derived from a human being. Now another source for this lactase is bacteria. Those of you who are going to go on to take microbiology will learn that there are a large number of bacteria, and each can have distinct characteristics pertaining to the environment in which that bacteria thrives, and the conditions that are optimal for their respective enzymes. So if we're going to look at bacteria, and we're going to extract lactase from any type of bacteria, we have to think about where that bacteria lives and what that means in terms of the optimal conditions in regards to that lactase. Now I'm going to let you know right now that if this lactase is derived from bacteria or humans, when we eat it, which this lactase came from edible capsules, it has to first pass through our stomach before it can be utilized in the small intestine. And the stomach has an acidic pH. So it might actually make sense that this enzyme, if it were derived from a particular type of bacteria, that we would want that bacteria to be able to survive in an acidic environment to guarantee that our lactase will not be denatured or unfold under acidic conditions. So, potentially, if we get this enzyme from a certain type of bacteria, we want to find a bacteria that expresses lactase and that is capable of surviving in an acidic environment. So we're probably going to expect the pH that is optimal for this particular lactase from bacteria to be somewhere in the 2 to 4 range, probably something pretty acidic. Okay. Furthermore, because we're going to be using this enzyme in the process of consuming any kind of food that contains dairy, and doesn't necessarily just have to be milk or ice cream, it could also be cheese on a pizza or a hamburger, we want to make sure that this enzyme is going to be capable of working at a multitude of different temperatures. Okay? And I'll tell you right now, the bacteria that this enzyme was extracted from typically work best at a temperature of about 55 degrees Celsius. So this particular bacteria from which we derive this lactase predominantly exist at a temperature of about 55 degrees Celsius and a pH around 4. So what does this mean in terms of this whole experiment? Well, it means that, determine, that depending upon the results we obtain when we test both of these optimal conditions, we might be able to determine if the lactase in question was derived from human cells or a specific type of bacterial cell that is capable of surviving at temperatures pretty close to this and pHs close to that. Okay? So, what did you do in this exercise? Well, the first thing we did was we attempted to determine the optimal temperature. So we measured 
the activity of the enzyme at a variety of temperatures. We did 0 degrees, 25, 40, 60, 80, and 100. Now, what we're hoping to see here is a definitive point amongst all of these temperatures where the enzymatic activity is higher than at any of the other points. That tells us what our optimal temperature is. Okay? So, how are we measuring that? Well, remember, we're measuring the amount of glucose produced. Because glucose is one of the products that results from hydrolyzing lactose. So when we hydrolyze lactose, and that reaction is sped up by the presence of lactase, we start to accrue glucose. Okay? So what you did was you measured the relative levels of glucose at each of these temperatures. Okay? If the highest level of glucose is produced at 40 degrees Celsius, then it would lend to the hypothesis that this is human lactase. If, however, the optimal temperature, the highest level of glucose, appears to be around 60, that then leads to the potential that our hypothesis that this lactase was derived from a specific type of bacterial cells is correct, okay, or supported. So you took a tube and you put lactase in it and you set it at zero degrees for five minutes, 25 degrees for five minutes. So you had six different tubes sitting at these temperatures for five minutes. At the end of that five minutes, you then added the milk to each tube and incubated them again for 10 minutes. What I do want to talk about is what we expect to happen potentially here, maybe a little here, and maybe here at zero degrees. Okay? We'll talk about the optimal and I'll show you how to read a graph based off of this data here in just a second. So let's say we see a decrease in glucose production and that means a decrease in lactase activity at each of those three temperatures. What does this mean? Well, at zero degrees, if you think about the kinetic energy at this temperature, all of the molecules are moving very, very slowly. What does that mean? That means that even if we have enzyme and we have substrate, because they're moving so slow, the rate of the chemical reaction, the rate of the reaction in general, is so slow that we're not going to be able to produce an abundant amount of product. Okay? So if you saw a decrease in the amount of glucose produced between 25 degrees Celsius and 0 degrees Celsius, the most likely reason for that was because the kinetic energy was too low. The molecules are just moving too slowly for us to really have an overabundance of reactions. Okay? Understand, at this temperature, the enzyme is still folded and functional. Meaning, if I pull the enzyme out of this temperature and put it at a more favorable temperature, it should still work. Now let's go over here to 80 and especially 100 degrees, where we see a decrease in enzymatic activity just like at zero. Why? Well, with these temperatures, it's not because the kinetic energy is too low. In these temperatures, the kinetic energy is incredibly high. What that, what that effectively does is it disrupts bonds in the enzyme. And so the enzyme unfolds. This process is called denaturation. And when the enzyme unfolds, it's no longer functional. So now, I no longer have functional lactase, which means it can't speed up the reaction whereby lactose is hydrolyzed into glucose and galactose. So I see a drop in activity here because of denaturation. I see a drop of activity here because the kinetic energy is too low. Now let's talk real quick about what we would expect to see or, more importantly, how we would interpret results okay, if we saw a particular peak 
between 25 and 60 degrees. So let's erase this. And let's say I have a graph. Okay, so here's zero, here's 100. And this is gonna be my glucose produced. Let's say that my graph looks something like this. Okay, so if that's my graph based off of the results I obtained, where my glucose levels increase up to this point right around here and then begin to decrease, here are the things I need to know to interpret this data. First and foremost, the optimal temperature is going to be the top of that peak. Okay, now if you got multiple values here that were all equal, let's say you got 500 milligrams per deciliter of glucose at 25, 40, and 60, you cannot safely say what you hypothesize the optimal temperature to be, simply because it's all level, okay? However, outside of that, the other things we can at least draw conclusions from are what's happening over here and what's happening over here. Why is this so much lower in terms of the glucose produced compared to my optimal? Most likely, because the molecular movement is so slow. The kinetic energy is too low. What's going on over here? Why did I see a decrease in glucose? Again, that's due to enzymatic denaturation due to the higher temperature, okay? Now, if you did not get a single point, 25, 40, or 60, that you can state is apparently the optimal temperature. In other words, if the values between two or more of these are equal, what you need to think about instead is, is there a way you could further flesh out this experiment to allow you to then determine what if the optimal temperature actually is a point between these two or these two, okay? So be thinking about what you could potentially do to kind of further elucidate these results so that you could interpret them to a higher, more precise degree. Okay. The important thing to take away from this, though, is if you do have a curve that looks like this, you can then at least note that the optimal temperature is going to be the peak of that curve. Okay. Now, if you do find, again, that 40 degrees is your optimal temperature, that lends some weight to the argument that this lactase was derived from humans. If you find that it's at 60 degrees, that lends to the argument that it might be from a particular type of bacteria capable at, uh, of surviving at environments of that temperature. Okay, so now let's look at the other environmental factors that affected enzymatic activity, pH. So we looked at seven different pHs, 2, 4, 6, 7, 8, 10, and 12. And what you did is you took buffers from each of these, 2, 4, 6, 7, 8, 10, and 12. You mixed that buffer with the enzyme, and then you added drops of milk to see if we still got the lactase reaction. Again, remember, wherever we see the highest level of glucose produced, that is going to be our optimal pH. Wherever we see the lowest levels of glucose produced with pH, that is going to be due to denaturation. Okay? So, no matter what you got, there are two potential outcomes we were really looking for here. In the event that it was human lactase, you expected to see the pH range from 10, I'm sorry, you expected to see the glucose levels rise when you got closer to seven and then begin to fall. Okay? Again, if it's a peak, it's gonna be your optimal or best pH, so that is where the enzymatic activity is the highest. If it is not there, okay, if it drops, plummets in regards to pH, then what that really means in terms of the enzyme is that the enzyme is being denatured. So we have denaturation here, and we have denaturation 
Now, this is what we expected to achieve if, in fact, the lactase was derived from humans. If it was derived from that particular type of bacteria, what we expect to see would be something more along the lines of maybe this. Okay, where we have a peak in enzymatic activity that is more in the acidic pH range. So any pH less than seven, we might still see some retention of activity even past seven a little bit, but by the time we get way over here, again, we see a loss of activity due to denaturation. So, depending upon which of these two graphs you attain, that would add further argument to which type of organism you believe or hypothesize the lactase originated. Okay? And what I believe most of you found was that the optimal pH appeared to be around four. Okay? So that would lend to the argument that the lactase was derived from an, a particular type of bacteria capable of surviving in an acidic environment. The important thing to take away from both the optimal temperature exercise and the optimal pH exercise are not fully just what organism did we get the enzyme from, okay? More importantly, what you should take away from this exercise is A, can you identify the optimal conditions if given a graph? Can you find where that optimal condition is? It's always the highest point on the graph. It's the peak. Optimal means best. So it is where the enzyme performs its activity at its best. Okay? Then, can you interpret what's actually happening when you see a decrease in enzymatic activity, either due to pH or due to temperature? Remember, in regards to temperature, if the temperature is low, the enzyme is still functional. It's just that the molecular movement is too slow. The level of kinetic energy is too low. If the temperature is very high, though, then you've got a completely different scenario. In that particular instance, bonds in the protein are being disrupted, interactions in the protein are being disrupted, and the end result is the protein unfolds, giving us a non-functional, denatured protein. In regards to pH, if ever you see a decrease in enzymatic activity at either a really high pH or even a really low pH, it is always due to denaturation. 